Yeah, you, you gotta hustle. <laughs> you can't be at the same location and with the same behavior. You gotta, when you want to change the behavior, you, you, you at least change the location. One, you need to be determined. You need to be, you need to be disciplined and focused. The business is something that you are able, at the end of the day, it's giving you something, profit. What do I do? Saturday we have a game. I don't have eggs, right? At home. We go there, we win. They'll give me maybe a 50 or 100 kwacha. Then I'll benefit out of that. Only on Millennium TV, we miss business. You are still watching Millennium TV, Zambia's first and only financial and business channel. I'm your host, Mtinta Monga Mwemba. Welcome to Farming Today. And today, being a Wednesday, we are having a workshop, meaning that we are going to get interactive. The number is right on your screen. I'll still give it, I'll still give it out in a bit. I have with me in studio a guest who is coming from the, from the Helping Hands in Snake Safety, the National Coordinator, Mr. Marcel Van Drill. Marcel, welcome to the program. Thank you very much for having me. And thank you for coming. <laughs> okay, so Marcel, uh, before we get into it, I just want to check that I am safe. I, I'm not expecting any surprises of, um, I don't know, <laughs> maybe there's a snake somewhere in your pocket or in your shoes. Am I safe, Marcel? You're safe. Um, I do sometimes bring a snake, but that's after, you know, really agreeing with everybody involved that there will be a snake. We clearly did not agree, we, ladies we not, and gentlemen. So I, bring, so I didn't bring one. Okay. Yeah. I can relax now. I was, yeah. I, was, I was terrified. I'm terrified of snakes. Okay. But I'm hoping that at the end of the day, at the end of the program, uh, let's say if my phobia was at 10, it will come to four or three. I'm hoping that you help me to overcome my phobia for snakes. Okay, you place a lot of responsibility in my shoes right now. Um, <laughs> but it's not bad to be afraid of snakes because in Zambia we do have dangerous snakes around. We okay, so it's, so it's not a bad thing, ladies no. and gentlemen. I am afraid of snakes yeah. and I know that a lot of people out there are afraid of snakes. Mm. So it's not a bad thing. No, I mean that can keep you safe, but we need to be afraid of snakes for the right reasons. We mm -hmm. have snakes that can potentially kill you if they bite you. Mm -hmm. But if we leave snakes alone, they leave us alone. The bites happen out of self-defense. Uh, yeah. um, so that means that if we act sensibly around snakes, uh, we should not be in trouble. Okay. Yeah. So, Marcel, give us a brief background of your organization, mm -hmm. uh, Helping Hands in Snake Safety. Yes. Um, helping Hands in Snake Safety, it's, it's on my t-shirt as well. It's on the back of my t-shirt, but you can't see it. Okay. Um, I hope you brought me a t-shirt as well. That's a beautiful t-shirt. <laughs> we sell t-shirts, but Ooh, that wow. is a fundraiser. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, we'll talk later yeah. then. No, uh -huh. Helping Hands in Snake Safety abbreviates to HISS, uh, the, the sound the snakes makes, H-H-I-S-S. Uh, mm -hmm. um, and it was set up a couple of years ago already by uh, a friend of mine, Ken Waterhouse, who is the founder of his as an NGO idea, and he started rolling out already projects and programs to sensitize people about snakes. Uh, but only last year, in 2020, we actually officially registered as an NGO in Zambia, so we have everything in place. We have five board members. Um, I'm doing most of the work as the national coordinator. And we basically set it up for improvement of snake safety which means safety for the people and safety for the snakes. Okay. Um, and we do that by providing sensitization activities such as going to schools, youth clubs, but also going into communities to teach people about snakes, how to be safe around snakes, uh, things which you shouldn't do when you see a snake, things you, can, you must do, but also what to do in case of a snake bite. That's one thing. Then the next thing is we want to train people in proper snake handling, and we do that together with an organization called uh, Snakes Alive Zambia. Um, and these Training courses are to make people more comfortable around snakes, but also to really learn how to handle the snakes, including black mambas, uh, the cobras, pafferas, and so on. And with that, we are slowly starting to develop a network of people who can remove snakes for you. So if you find a, a snake in your house and mm -hmm. there's a snake handler around, mm -hmm. they can come in and actually remove the snake safely, safely for you. Okay. The third thing we want to do is to improve 
snake bite treatment in Zambia. That's a huge problem. Uh, our medical staff usually doesn't get any training in snake bite treatment. It's not on the curriculum for health practitioners. Mm -hmm. So they are not capacitated. Equipment is missing. Of course, we have a very, very small stock of antivenom, which is required in serious snake bites. Uh, so there's a long way to go to improve that. But okay, so you, you mentioned that you only registered the organization as of last year. Yes. That's uh, yes. 2020. 2020 yes. So how have you progressed up until now? Well, we put quite a bit of our own money in to make sure that we could actually uh, roll out activities because there's no point in having an NGO which doesn't do anything. Um, we got some uh, donor uh, funding to conduct snake handling training courses. We have received money from America from an organization called uh, Save the Snakes, which we have used to develop uh, information brochures specifically for children. It is sort of languages, children oriented, a lot of nice images in it, but to teach them how can you be safe with, uh, around snakes. And the good thing about that is every time I go into a school and I teach kids about, uh, about snakes. I can also all give e each of them a brochure so they have like memorabilia but also there's very good information. You know, what should I do if I see a snake? They can mm -hmm. read that, they can keep that for themselves. And we leave behind as many as, as possible posters depicting the dangerous and the harmless common snakes in that area. And when Last week I was in Livingston. I went to several schools to, to teach kids about school, uh, about snakes there. And we also left behind posters they can hang up where they can see, okay, these are all the dangerous snakes, these are the harmless snakes, and they are all common in this area. And they can start memorizing that if they see a snake which they recognize, oh, that's one of the dangerous ones, they know, I, I really need to leave that alone. Okay. But the general advice is always leave every snake alone and get a handle in to remove it for you. Okay, so what is your vision? Our vision? Woo. Uh, if you see a vision as a long-term goal, then we would like at some point that a large a part of Zambia's population understand how important snakes are in the ecosystem, but also in pest control for us. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, that will lead to a reduction in the number of snakes being killed. And second of all, of course, we want to not only improve snake bite treatment, but we want to make sure that less people get bitten because it will take a very long time, a lot of money and effort in improving snake bite treatment, but avoiding snake bites is always the best, best me methodology. So we don't talk about snake bite treatment, we talk about snake bite management, and that includes prevention of snake bites. Snake, okay, I like that, snake bite management. management. So how, yes. how, how are people supposed to manage that? Well, management is, is it, it, in theory, is very simple. It's if you stick to the rules which we teach in the sensitization activities and in lectures and so on, because I've been lecturing at UNSA, for example, a couple of times. Uh, if we, we manage to do that, uh, to, to convey the message, this is how you can stay safe if you know that there might be snakes around then people are less likely to get bitten. And you, don't, you don't walk around at night in, in, in a forest or around uh, farm areas uh, in the dark, especially not unprotected. You know, uh, a lot of people walk on flip-flops in the rural areas. Now, that if you then walk through thick bushes and there might be a snake, you might surprise the snake. The snake might bite you out of self-defense on your foot and then you're in trouble. And a properly closed shoe may have saved you from that bite. Um, but also don't try to kill a snake. If you find a mamba in your house and you try to kill it, you aggravate the mamba more, it will become more defensive and therefore more aggressive and will try to bite and when it does, then the trouble really starts. Now so the best is to, to leave it alone? Yes, where possible, yes. Now immediately there we come into a very problematic area because what do you do when you find a snake it's, I mean, in your it's house, in your house. Uh, and yes. it doesn't want to go out? Uh, I recently had, uh, I, was, I was facilitating a workshop Mm -hmm. in uh, Capua and I got a, a message via Facebook that there was a black mamba in somebody's uh, washing machine on a farm. So I drove, after the, the whole day, I drove out to the farm and that was probably the first day since I bought snake handling tools many years ago that I didn't have any tools with me. So in the end I had to use an old walking cane to catch um, about a two meter black mamba, which is not a very big mamba. Uh, they can grow that size in one year. But it is a snake which potentially can give you a very dangerous bite. Um, yeah, but there was no, the, the people tried to chase it out, but it went from the kitchen into the laundry room where it went into the washing the machine. Washing yeah, machine. what can you do then? Uh, and the problem is, of course, if there's no snake handler available at all. Fortunately, I was around the there, but normally in Kapu we don't have anybody trained. Now, in the rural areas, it's, it's, it's a lot worse. There, people don't know what to do. They can't call anybody because there is simply nobody. And that's one of the long-term missions we have, to have more snake handling experts trained.
people that can remove a snake safely for people. Okay, so talking about training people, mm -hmm. what are some of you, the products and services that you offer? Um, well, in, in training, we, we work together uh, for, uh, at the moment with uh, an organization called Snakes Alive Zambia, which is a company set up. It's based here in Lusaka, okay. and they give snake handling training from Kalimba Reptile Farms. But if there's, for example, a an, an, uh, request from one of the big mines, because they encounter snakes a lot in their areas, um, we sometimes travel all the way there to give training there. And that means that you learn a full day about how, you know, all the awareness things about snakes, learn about their behavior, what kind of snakes can you expect, how do they behave. Um, also learn about how to, you know, be safe around snakes, but also how to properly recognize which snakes are and are not dangerous. And then the next day is a full-on training where you handle snakes. So you really learn to handle the black mamba, learn how to handle the spitting cobras, non-spitting cobras, puff adders, gaboon vipers, and so on, to make sure that you can really handle any situation. And then, of course, we try to organize that people who are willing to be on our network, that we also provide them with the proper tools, where a snake hook, a snake grabber, a tongue, uh, but also protective gear in case you have to deal with a, a spitting cobra, which mm -hmm. aims at your eyes. Yeah, so there's, there's so many training services. already, there's a lot. Okay, so the services that you've mentioned, mm -hmm. how affordable are they? And also, how accessible are these services? Well, the thing is also in Zambia, a lot of people are saying, "Yeah, no, you need to, you know, you need to give, make these training courses very cheap." But mm -hmm. let's be very honest: um, nothing is cheap, and nothing is for free. If we can get donor funding in from a big organization, and that's always our appeal, then we have money which we can use to suppress the cost. But the person giving the training does that for a living. Mm -hmm. It's not fair to say, "Oh, you should take less money." so that other people can afford having the training. So, but if we can, if we have the donor funding to support that, then we can reduce the training costs and he can still earn his living and people can still access that training. Uh, but it's, it's, it's a difficult situation, especially under COVID, where a lot of people have lost jobs or their in income is a lot less uh, and people are very nervous in spending money. They want to hold on because they don't know, you know when this uncertainty stops. Mm -hmm. That's the problem, of course. We have elections coming up. Yes, we don't it's know what an is election that going year. To do. Everybody's holding on to their money. Everybody's holding on to the money. You can also mm -hmm. see that in the tourism sector, where lodges are really struggling mm -hmm. because of that. Okay. Yeah. No. I'm sure the people, the stakeholders have heard you out there. <laughs> they will pump in the money so that more people can get this training because mm -hmm. this training is very important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Another training we, we give, uh, and very often we do that with uh, a partner organization called First Aid Africa. They roll out first aid uh, programs, uh, training people in you know, how to put bandages on, how to save somebody's life until paramedics come and take over, mm -hmm. uh, right after an accident, for example. Now, they have now, we have now partnered with them, and we provide a plug-in on first aid in snake bite treatment. And we are not qualified to give... Uh, training or advice to doctors on snake bite treatment that we leave to experts in South Africa. Um, but we are qualified to give first aid training and eh? what to do in case of a snake bite. What kind of methods can you do based on the type of venom that is injected? And uh, while you get the person to a proper medical facility, uh, preferably a good hospital. Okay, so talking venom, venom yes. I'll ask you to hold your thoughts on that. Mm -hmm. Let's take a quick break, and when we come back, Marcel is going to tell us what an, what an antivenom is mm -hmm. okay. and what type of an antivenom to use on what type of a snake bite. Because mm -hmm. most of the times you're bitten by a snake, but you, you're not sure which snake has bitten you. I mean, obviously, when a snake bites you, you don't have the time to <laughs> look at the type. You know what I yeah, mean? You just, exactly. you, yeah. you run but away. That's not, that's not even necessary, but I'll explain that after. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, let's take a short break.
welcome back to farming today we are discussing the the safety of I, I beg your pardon we're discussing snake awareness and snake bite treatment i have a guest in studio marcel who is national coordinator for helping hands in snake safety and before the break we were talking about the training that your organization gives to the public mm -hmm. yes so right now let's let's uh let's get into uh well i don't know how you're going to handle this question but i'm going to ask it anyway marcel yes. like what role are you playing as an organization in the social economic development of, of our, our nation, nation. Yes. i know right yes. <laughs> well, it's a very often asked questions well, mm -hmm. you know what is the profit of this um the profit is very simple First of all, if we kill all the snakes, which some people are advocating, and there's no good snake but a dead snake. Mm -hmm. now, if we kill all the snakes, we have no crops left. Simply put, if I take a male and a female mouse, and I put them together in a very big room, and close off the room and give them enough food, after a year, I have more than 22,000 mice. Now imagine what that do, does to your crops. Yeah? Imagine that in your maize field, or in whatever, your vegetable patch, whatever you have. Mm -hmm. We need um, animals to control pests like mice and rats and uh, snakes are one of the best in that sense because the only animal that can follow mice and rats in their burrow is a snake and eagles can't reach owls can't reach but a snake can go in there and a snake in one meal a big snake like uh, a splitting cobra for example in one meal is able to eat an entire family of mice and the male the male the female uh, and the wait 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 myself <laughs> hold up an entire Family of mice. Yes, if you have a, a male mouse and a female mouse uh, and a baby mouse and all the baby, yes, that can go in in one meal in, into into a big snake like a good size mamba or good size cobra. Mm -hmm. Now there are not many animals that eat that many mice and rats, so we already need them to protect our crops. That's the social economic benefit of of protecting snakes. But there's another one as well. If somebody gets bitten by a snake. Either they, they in, in, in most cases, because of the bad health situation at the moment, that the health provision, um, either they lose their lives, and with that a family can lose a cost winner, especially in the rural agricultural areas, or that person gets permanently maimed, for example, by amputation of a hand or uh, an arm or a leg and can't work properly anymore, or has long lasting or everlasting neurological disorders when it's a neurologic toxin that was inject injected with the venom. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of health issues involved in snake bites which lead to loss of uh, economic prosperity. And, and so there are several ways to approach this question. And mm -hmm. I've just done that, I think. So it's important that we protect snakes, but it's also important that we protect people from snake bites. Okay, so how would you describe the Zambian culture approach towards snakes oh, in just, general? I just said already, there's no good <laughs> uh -huh. snake but a dead snake. That's our um, approach uh, as Zambians? Well, I must honestly say, uh, this also comes because we've always been conditioned to do so. The snake doesn't come out very well in the Bible. It doesn't come out well in uh, many of the traditional <laughs> folklore. Yes. Um, and a lot of people, let's be very honest about this, a lot of people in Zambia know uh, people who have either been bitten or even killed by snakes. So that doesn't make you a big friend of snakes. No, um, it doesn't. And, but I must say there is a very slow change. In 2016, I set up the Facebook page Zambian Snakes and Other Crawlies, mm -hmm. which at that time I hoped, you know, would be really cool to have a little club of people who are enthusiastic, like maybe we get a hundred people together. It's now more than 15,000 people. Wow. And you see more and more that it's Zambians teaching other Zambians you shouldn't kill snakes, this is what you should do. So what we are always trying to advocate in, in behavior towards snakes is really starting to be echoed and repeated. And that is really encouraging. So you see more and more people advocating for, the, for protecting snakes mm -hmm. and try to live with snakes and, and find alternative ways of dealing with snake problems. Okay, so what are some of the Zambian myths that you have encountered surrounding oh, snakes? How much time do we have left? <laughs> um, we have enough time. Yeah, a lot of them. For uh -huh. example, there's the one about the snake. Uh, usually they dis depict an, a black mamba who can uh, crow like a cock would do. Uh, and they have a crest even on the head. Now, the crest, that could be possible because every time a snake has grown, it needs to shed its skin because the skin doesn't grow along. Mm -hmm. And then a new skin is already developed underneath that. And sometimes, on, on the top of the head, 
there might be a little bit of sliver of old skin that stays and that over time that grows and grows. So you could say, okay, that, that crest might be there, but snakes can't make those kind of sounds simply because they don't have the vocal cords to do so. The only sounds they can make is a puffing or hissing sound. That's why they always puff or hiss to warn us. So that's a myth that you can easily dispel by using common sense. They physically are not able to make that kind of sound. Another one is, and when I just spoke to your colleague outside about a myth that um, sometimes snakes travel in pairs and sometimes they take revenge when you kill one. And people then say, okay, you know, I, we, we killed a puff adder in the village and then we saw another one coming exactly the same way. I said, that, do you think that one was taking revenge? Absolutely, it came to kill us. Wow. I said, so, but what, <laughs> let's, let's provide an alternative. What if this was a female, it was mating season, and that the other one, the second one was a male following the scent trail of the female, basically for the purpose of mating. How does that sound? And then people are, oh yeah, actually that makes more sense. Snakes are really not smart animals. They work only on instinct. They don't have those kind of emotions like, I'm going to take revenge. They don't even understand what's happening. Mm -hmm. They have two things they want to do. They want to eat and reproduce. That's what their life is all about. That's how simple snakes are. And if we bother them in doing that, then of course they get defensive. Mm -hmm. And that's where problems start. Okay. So what is the importance of snake awareness? Well, the importance of snake awareness is very simple. We need to protect people from snakes. And we do that by making them aware about what are the risk factors and what is behavior mm -hmm. that puts you at risk of getting a snake bite. But also we need to make, it, make them aware about the importance of, of snakes in our environment. Can you just yes. elaborate more on that? Well, in What's our, the uh, importance? They have an ecological role to play, like basically every animal in the world. Um, mm -hmm. We find mosquitoes extremely uh, an extreme nuisance, mm -hmm. and they, they transfer a lot more problems than snakes do. I mean, we estimate that 100,000 people get killed by snakes each year worldwide, but it's more than a million for mosquitoes. But we hate snakes, and we don't hate mosquitoes. Um, so mosquitoes are, are a nuisance which we want to get rid of. Um, I lost the train of thought now. <laughs> I lost the train. What was the question again? My question was, uh, elaborate more on the importance of snakes. Oh, yeah. So yes. we, we, like, we, why we, should we not yes, kill them? Exactly. Because so we've the been told when yeah. you see a snake, okay, anyway, for yeah. girls, a girl like me, yeah. you run, okay? You run, yeah. Yes. But for guys, and the, bo the boys kill. The boys, yeah, they yeah, kill. Yeah. They'll get a stone, they'll get a big stick and yeah. kill them. So why shouldn't yeah. they kill them? So I, I talked about the mosquito, which we mm -hmm. don't like, mm -hmm. but it's food for a lot of other animals. A lot of birds eat mosquitoes. Um, and the same for the snake. Yes. Um, they are on the menu of many birds of prey. Uh, many eagles eat snakes, uh, owls eat snakes. Um, uh, snakes eat other snakes as well. Uh, we wait, excuse me? Snakes I'll, I'll eat each other? <laughs> yes, but there are also mammals that eat snakes, like mongoose. In general, we find mongoose really nice, eh? or servals, or all these kind of uh, small wild cats, but they prey on, on snakes as well. Now we come to snakes eating snakes. Yes, it's that's very interesting. It's very important to realize that there are some snakes that are opportunistic, like um, cobras eat a lot of other, other snakes. But there's one snake in particular, which is quite famous in Zambia. Uh, the local name is usually the Muswema. Oh, yes, I the know. Olive the olive whip snake or the olive sand snake. Uh, th these are names for the same snake. Mm -hmm. It's a snake that, that has a venom which can't harm human beings. Uh, if it bites you, it might be a bit sore, it might itch a bit. And I've, I've been bitten by one before. Uh, it didn't do any harm I actually to me. Really. I actually saved that for later. I wanted to yeah. ask if you've been oh, bitten by times, a snake before. Many times. We'll come many back. times? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, I've been bitten by that oh. snake, it doesn't really have much effect on the human being, unless you have a pre-existing condition, like a certain very heavy allergy. A friend of mine has an allergy, if he gets bitten by that snake, he's in serious trouble. But in general, if you're healthy, that snake does absolutely no harm. But that snake, with that weak venom, which has little effect on humans, eats, kills and eats snakes which we really are, should be afraid of, like the black mamba, cobras and puffadas and other snakes. It, it, it likes eating snakes as well as other reptiles. So it's a very useful snake to have around, but we kill it a lot because it looks a bit like a mamba, and mm -hmm. a lot of people believe uh, another myth, a uh, muswema is a baby black mamba. No, that's of course not the case. These are two different species, just like tigers and lions would be. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, you are mentioning the muswema now. Uh -huh. Tell us some uh, different types of snakes different types of snakes. Mm. Um, well, we have, first of all, let, let's look at the statistics. We have mm -hmm. 99 species of snakes in Zambia. 99, 99. in yeah. Zambia. In Zambia. 
Out of these okay. 99, we have earmarked 71 as being not harmful to human beings. 71? Yes. So I some wish can I knew that earlier. Yeah. <laughs> we take these little baby steps. Okay. Out of the, these, but these 71, the, some of them have no venom. Others do have venom, but the venom is too weak to cause us real harm. And I say real harm because they can, in some cases, cause harm that the pain bite is very painful, for example. Mm -hmm. And you can get some skin issues, things like that, where you can fall really sick. But you always survive. Now, then we have a group of snakes left, uh, 28, which are earmarked as what we call dangerous. There are snakes which are dangerous but can't deliver a deadly bite. And many of the, the night adders, for example, uh, but also the python. Um, they can give a bite which is not dangerous in the sense that it can kill you, but it can cause very bad physical harm. You could lose potentially part of your finger or a finger. Uh, a python that bite can be really serious. bad. Yes, because you can get very big lacerations from all the teeth in the python, and the python usually is a big snake, so powerful bite. Mm -hmm. But we have 13 snakes in Zambia that can deliver a bite which can potentially be deadly if you don't seek medical attention. Okay. And then we talk about the cobras, the mambas, and the big vipers like the, the, the puff adder and the gaboon viper. Now, those snakes you have to, if you, uh, you're bitten by one of those snakes, you have to go to the hospital. You should go to the hospital in any kind of snake bite, but those especially you will not survive if you leave that completely untreated. However, out of those, mm -hmm. about 10 are common. And usually in any area in Zambia, you find maybe five or six of those dangerous snakes. Okay, so. How do you distinguish the snakes? How do you know this yeah. is a cobra? This is a yeah. And then a, we talk again about, about myths because mm -hmm. there's a lot of images you can find online where it depicts this is how you can recognize a deadly snake or a not a deadly snake or a mm -hmm. venomous, non venomous snake. There's no such thing. You can't identify them by specifics. What you need to do is to learn how to be to, to how to recognize the dangerous snakes in your area. Now, okay. and that is that is where we come in as his. Because what we're doing is we're developing posters on our website, which people can download for free. And there we dis depict which are the common and dangerous snakes in Zambia, for example. That's one poster. If you download that, you have an overview of all the dangerous snakes which you might encounter anywhere in Zambia. Uh, and if you learn to recognize those, then you really have an advantage because that means that others are not the, the harmful snakes. Um, but it's a matter of learning to recognize. Uh, so does it mean I'll have to come in for the training in order for me to Well, that would definitely the help snakes? because then, you, you, you know, if the training is given at Kalimba where they have those dangerous snakes, then you can really learn how, you know, how to recognize them because you can see the snakes. And the trainer, Paul Lloyd, often takes one or two of these snakes out to uh, really show it to the people. And if it's the harmless snakes which he takes out, you can touch it, you can handle it, and you can feel how strong a snake really is. But there's no way of saying, okay, you know, if a snake has uh, a round pupil, it's a harmless um, snake, and when mm -hmm. it's ellip ellipse-shaped, you know, what people think, like a cat eye, then it's dangerous. I mean, for example, the, bl the black mamba has a round pupil. There already you go. It's one of the most feared snakes in Africa. Um, but it has then the wrong uh, eye shape. You know, it, mm -hmm. it simply doesn't work like that. Okay. Well, okay. Uh, I don't know. I was <laughs> to be honest, myself, I was hoping you'd say, uh, I don't know, maybe if it has this certain shape, this color, and then you know it's a harmless snake. So now I'm like, okay, no, I don't know if my phobia has dropped. <laughs> unfortunately, that won't you. Okay, let's take a quick break. And when we come back, we are still discussing snakes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Are you thinking of where to buy quality and affordable farming inputs? Farmers Bank has it all for you. We supply a variety of agricultural chemicals, horticultural chemicals, veterinary products, hand tools, holes, safety boots, gloves, raincoats, sprayers, pesticides, insecticides, fertilizers, seeds, and many more. We are along Chiparamba Road, shop number 51, town center, Lusaka. You can call us on 0977-713-309 or plus 260-211-225-352. Farmers Band, suppliers of all types of seeds. 
We are also on plot number 38567, Mumba Road, Lusaka. Yeah, you, you gotta hustle. <laughs> you can't be at the same location and with the same behavior. You got when you want to change the behavior, you 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 at least change the location. One, you need to be determined. You need to be you need to be disciplined and focused. The business is something that you are able at the end of the day. It's giving you something profit. What do I do? Saturday we have a game. I don't have eggs, right? At home. We go there, we win. They'll give me maybe a 50 or 100 kwacha. Then I'll benefit out of that. Only on Millennium TV. We miss business. It is packaged to perfection. A trending topics that we will be discussing to make sure you know exactly what's happening in the world of social media and, of course, our very own country. Exactly. We don't just limit ourselves to the country, but we also move across the borders with the best in international news, policy making. We also bring experts to bring to you right information right here on The Breakfast Show. And if you've got questions, we got you covered too. Like we said, we're on Facebook, so comment, leave your questions. We will be able to answer them. And if we can, trust me, we're going to get somebody that can. Yeah, join us every day, Monday to Saturday. It's Constance and Paul. Oh, Paul and Constance. No, definitely Constance and Paul. Paul and Constance. Definitely Constance. Paul and Constance. Seven to nine. It is... You are still watching Millennium TV with me, Mtinta Monga Mwemba. I have a guest in studio, Marcel. Mm -hmm. Marcel, we're, st we're still having fun, right? Talking snakes. I didn't know it would be this fun. <laughs> <laughs> you think it's fun, eh? I, no, right now I'm, I'm relaxing, you know? Good, I think good. it's fun. Yeah, because you know I didn't bring a snake. Uh, yes. <laughs> Thank God for that. So, Marcel, are there any traditional methods that are effective in reducing snake bites? Um, there's a lot of belief in all kinds of traditional medication in Zambia um, and a lot of them can really help in all kinds of ailments but not in case of a snake bite. If you get a serious snake bite there's only one thing you can do and it's go to a proper hospital um, because there's, okay. there's several reasons for that. First of all if you get a serious snake bite it's highly likely that you need to administer antivenom. That would be the only way of saving your life. Now, traditional healers have no antivenom, and even if they have, they can't administer it because it needs to be done in a controlled environment. Antivenom is, is in itself quite, it's very potent, but it's also very dangerous. It's made out of snake venom. And if administered uh, in a non-secure environment, uh, one of the side effects could be, an adverse effect could be to, that the patient enters into anaphylactic shock, and that could kill the patient. So antivenom itself could potentially be lethal as well. So if that occurs, Measures need to be taken to make sure that you survive the antivenom injection. Now, okay, so, so that's now already one. I, I don't want to cut you short, but I'm thinking of rural areas. Yes, rural areas. Deep, deep in yes, the village, the problem, where you need to yeah. drive five, mm -hmm. six hours to the hospital. Mm -hmm. You've been bitten by a dangerous snake. So what do you do? You well, don't have a car. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, this is the, this is one of the reasons why people turn to the traditional healer, exactly, which has the capacity to treat a lot of ailments but not this. Uh, their rationale is either I can't reach the hospital in time anyway or you know this is the man who will, who will save my life. Now the problem is that a traditional healer not only doesn't have proper um, the proper health uh, care tools and the proper medication. Another problem is that um, it, he always works in a non-sterile environment with non-sterile equipment and that can lead, lead to secondary infection on top of the snake bite. Now, a lot of the methodologies they, they, they conduct are counterintuitive. For example, they believe it's good when you have a snake bite to cut open the wound and suck out the venom. The venom doesn't go into the bloodstream, it goes into the lymphatic system. That's very complicated, but basically it enters the, the muscle tissue and then goes into the lymphatic system. It's impossible to suck that out. It's like trying to suck a rat through a little straw. It just doesn't work. You can't suck out venom. Okay. So, but if you cut open the, the bite side, it might be that you open a blood vessel. 
and that helps the venom to come into the bloodstream and there it's being transported much faster and as long as the venom is in a hand or in a foot it can't kill you but the moment it reaches the, 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 the vital parts of your body basically everything in your chest cavity and your head then it becomes lethal so there's a lot of methodologies people believe that can work like cutting open and sucking the bite side but they don't and in fact they they open you up for first of all infections and second of all more problems like i just described um, okay. another thing they believe is the application of uh, the, the, the black stone now the black stone is nothing more and a piece, and I'm really going what to is look, a, what's that? the black stone, it's, 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 it's said to be able to neutralize, and I'm going to really look at the viewers right now, it's said to neutralize venom from snakes, spiders, and scorpions. It does none of that. Black stone is nothing more than a piece of charred bone. I didn't bring it, but I have one myself. It's a piece of a bone from a cow, for example, charred over fire until it's black. Now, bone is porous, like a sponge, so if you put it on a little wound, it can suck up some of the blood, but I just explained. The venom is not in the blood, it has already spread in, in your system, in your muscle tissue and everywhere. That black stone doesn't have the power to suck out the venom. But by applying the, the, the black stone, people think, okay, now I'm going to be safe, and they relax. I don't need to go to the hospital. And they don't go to the hospital. Meanwhile, the venom keeps on doing what it was doing already, starting to spread and cause destruction and problems in your body. So it's basically a delay of getting proper treatment. Even if you're far away from a clinic, the best option you have is still to try to reach the clinic. Now, what is important is to make sure that the patient that is bitten remains as calm and immobile as possible. The okay. lymphatic system, where the, most of the venoms go, is being transported by muscle, muscle flexing. So if you flex the muscles a lot, you help speeding up the venom. So if you get bitten on the foot and you start running, you speed up the venom and it will spread through your body very quickly. Mm -hmm. You're helping the venom. Another thing is if, in some cases, the venom, because the, the, the fang has hit a blood vessel, it can enter the bloodstream. Or in case of a black mamba bite, the black mamba venom goes into the bloodstream as well. Now, when it reaches there, it, it, it's going very quickly because your heart is constantly pumping blood around. So, if you then have a very fast heart rate because you're very scared and you're very anxious about the blood bite, but then you're yes. actually helping the venom as well. So the best thing to do, and I, I really, I'm saying this, but in a rural area this is extremely difficult. The best thing is the patient just lies down, somebody gets help, they pick up the patients on a means of transport and rush you then to, the, to hospital. the hospital. That's the best you can do. Okay. Yeah. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, this is a workshop. Join the chat. We are talking snake awareness and snake bite treatment the number to send your messages is 0975 you can also send your messages to our facebook page oh okay I, I've, I've learned so much <laughs> like seriously i've learned so much um what about these things that we see in the movies marcel it's in a movie i know they're acting <laughs> uh, so a snake bites you let's say here mm -hmm. and then I'll probably tear maybe this mm -hmm. and then tie there. Yes. I know, you know, never, never believe the movies. They're acting. A couple of reasons <laughs> why that it, it's not good to, to put, uh, for the, but that's called a tourniquet. You put something very tight. Now, yes. a lot of mi movies you see that they put the tourniquet here and mm -hmm. really, really tight. No. Imagine that would work for the venom. The problem here is if you put it here, there's two bones. Yeah? So if you put pressure here, the area in between is not being squeezed, so the blood can still flow. So uh -huh. already there you can see the people who made the movies didn't know what they were doing. So you would have to tie it here, and in the case of the legs, for the same reason, the upper leg. Now, in most snake bites, if you put a tourniquet, it only becomes worse. Uh, uh, a lot of people get bitten by the cobras, the, the spitting cobras, or the puff adders, or the kaboom vipers. And they have a venom which is called cytotoxic. That means that that venom goes after destroying cells. So if you get bitten on the hand, your hand starts to swell really badly, it hurts really badly because it's starting to slowly eat away the flesh. And that's where you get these really nasty photos on, on Facebook, Internet, you can see those victims. It looks really very bad, and it is very bad. It's extremely painful. It's like having your hand in fire all the time. Oh. Um, but your hand wants to swell. That's a normal reaction because your body sends a lot of extra fluid to help solve the problem there. Your hand is under attack and it sends 
the counter attack and that makes the swelling happen. Now if you put a tunica you make all that pressure much worse. So you put so much pressure on all the cells in the limb which is affected that you help the destruction of your own limb. So a tunica cannot be applied there. Now the only time when you could apply a tunica if you're 100% sure, you need to be 100% sure that it was a black mamba. Mm -hmm. The black mamba venom doesn't cause that swelling and it mm -hmm. goes straight in your bloodstream. Mm -hmm. And there it can transport quite fast. But you, within a very short period of time, you have to apply the tunica. And it needs to be so tight that there's no longer any pulse left in the limb. Always the upper arm or the upper leg. Now, that gives you hours of time spent to get to a proper health facility. Okay. Now, but there, I'm not going to a aggravate the problems even more. Then you get to a health facility, the doctors don't really know what to do. And the first thing they do is, okay, let's remove the tunica. Now, there's all this pressure build up, mm -hmm. there's venom here. The moment you open the tunica, the venom rushes through your body. And that can kill you very quickly. So the doctor then needs to know, before we open the tunica, we need to apply a drip, we need to inject anti-venom in the drip to make sure that there's already anti-venom starting to work in the body, so that by the time we very slowly open the tunica, the enemy means meets your own army, eh? your own body, together with the anti-venom can then start fighting against the venom. That's basically what's happening. Okay, so talking anti-venom, what is an anti-venom? Okay, so anti-venom is basically like uh, a lot of vaccines are made out of venom. Mm -hmm. So there are people in South Africa that run snake farms and one of the most famous ones is uh, Africa Reptiles and Venom where Mike Perry uh, uh, works. It's one of the biggest uh, snake and snake bite experts in Africa. Um, and they have hundreds of snakes, black mambas, green mambas, James's mambas, cobras, puffer, everything, everything that produces deadly venom for humans. They milk the snakes, which basically means they hold the head of the snake over a cup and make the snake bite in, in a plastic over the cup. The venom drips in. You can find it online. You can look at uh, milking snakes. Mm -hmm. And they collect that venom, send it to a laboratory, and there they turn it into anti-venom. And that antivenom is then used to treat snake bites. Now, in Zambia, um, we have a big group of uh, snakes, all the, mam the, the mamba, the black mamba. We only have one, uh, one mamba, the black mamba. We don't have green mamba in Zambia. Whatever you have seen as a green snake, it was never a green mamba. Uh, wait, this are you serious? Yes. Yeah, let, yeah, let me be clear about that because there's always a hot debate. And it's okay. very simple. We don't have the habitat. We don't have the right habitat for, for green mambas. They live in coastal forests. We don't have coasts here, so we don't have coastal forests. Yeah. So for all our dangerous snakes, like the, 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 the black mamba, mm -hmm. uh, the spitting cobras, the non-spitting cobras, the puff feathers, the boom vipers, for all those, we have anti-venom. Because all, all those snake venoms in the production are being used to process and develop an antivenom called polyvalent antivenom. Poly Does is this antivenom work for all snake bites? or It works for all the snakes which I've just mentioned. All the snakes which can cause a serious health risk in, in humans. Mm -hmm. Now there are some snakes like stiletto snakes, uh, night adders, they give a very da dangerous bite as well in the sense that they can really hurt very badly, they can lead to some necrosis, you can lose a finger, but they can't kill you. So the antivenom is not made for those snakes. This is a life saving uh, serum yeah so all those snakes are covered by one type of antivenom and that is what we have in zambia not everywhere but we have stock okay. then there is one snake for which which has a bite which could potentially kill you which is called the twig or vine snake it's a very long thin snake which looks exactly like a branch um, and it has a, a venom that can potentially kill you but because in Recorded history in Africa, only two people have died for, from such a snake, and these oh, were snake. The whole of Africa. Yes, these were snake keepers. They had snake. These snakes, they allowed the snakes to really bite and chew in venom, and they didn't know that they were deadly, so they they didn't go for treatment. Those people have died too. Oh, so that's a shame. it's fi it's financially not viable to produce anti venom for that snake. Then there is the, the boom slang and the tree snake boom Afrikaans for boom tree. Uh, slung snake, boom slung. It's a long, usually green or brown snake, lives in trees. Mm -hmm. They have a similar kind of venom as the twig snake, but because bites are more common in, in southern Africa, a specific antivenom only for that snake 
has been produced called monovalent. Eh? Mono, it's for only one. However, that venom, uh, that antivenom is not available in Zambia. Reason being, there are hardly ever bites from that snake. It's a very docile snake and it's very reluctant to bite because it usually just climbs up a tree where we can't reach it anyway. Okay. So for all the snakes that could cause problems, there is polyvalent antivenom. Okay, that's, um, that's the problem great is, to hear. That is great to hear. The mm -hmm. problem is that it's not available everywhere. We would love to have it available in every clinic in Zambia, but then we get again into the problem. We need to keep that cool, because if you don't keep it cool, it goes bad and you can throw it away. Now, most rural clinics don't have a cooling facility, and even if they have, we often don't have power. So the cooling facility is not working. Plus, again, like I already said, when you want to administer antivenom as a doctor, you need mm -hmm. a lot of it. Yeah? Uh, the smallest dosage, as a start dose, is five vials, and one vial is priced between one and two thousand kwacha. Wow. It's expensive. It's expensive. Now, if you get a pafetabite, which requires the minimum amount, five vials. If you get a gaboon viper bite, eh, for people in the copper belt and so on, you need twenty. And th that is a starting wow. dose. You might later on need more depending on how you react. Now, then the hospital needs to have everything in place to treat the symptoms. It also has, has to have everything in place to make sure that if you have an adverse reaction to the antivenom, which could kill you potentially, they need to have that as well. They have to have, to have adrenaline pens ready, they have to have heart rate machines, all these kind of machines that do bleep, bleep, blop, blop, whatever they do. Okay. You need to have that to make sure that the patient survives. Okay, so Marcel, people are going to send us snakes out there <laughs> if we do not answer their questions. Yes, they should. <laughs> I'm, I'm very happy to answer questions. Okay, so this one is coming from Vashi Rose. That's Rose's dad. <laughs> Question is, have snakes stopped uh, Have snakes stopped being repelled by engine sounds or the vibrating of grounds? Right. Okay, so first of all, there's nothing that repels snakes. And people always ask also on the Facebook page, uh, what can I do to repel snakes? And they believe a lot. Uh, J's fluid, they believe uh, all kinds of oils. Uh, the purpose-made sprays, you can buy at pick and pay and even at the showgrounds, it doesn't work. Um, nothing repels snakes. And I'm not saying that because I am convinced that it's the case. It has been scientifically proven. The Alexander Laboratories at the Witwatersrand University in South Africa have done extensive tests. Other universities worldwide have done tests. None of those test results have been disputed. Nothing repels snakes. So no matter how bad something smells, it doesn't mean that the snake won't get there. That includes all kind of pretty flowers like marigold or things like wild, uh, um, wild uh, garlic. Mm -hmm. People think we plant that and it will help. It will not help. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then on sounds, mm -hmm. yes, snake don't, snakes don't like vibrations in the ground. They can pick that up because they have That's special like vehicles. organs. Vehicles and the like. Mm -hmm. However, they get used to that very quickly. And we have found snake burrows right next to roads. That already, um, because you can buy devices which send vibrations to the, the, the ground and they're being mm -hmm. sold as that will chase away the scorpions and the spiders and, and, uh, and, and the snakes. It's absolute nonsense. Don't waste your money on that. Okay, so let's check for another message. We have so many, by the way. Yes, please. Go <laughs> uh, this one is coming from Mwemba Chimuka. Does calling a snake handler come with a charge? If yes, how much? Okay. Somebody wants to join the club here. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, a lot of people think, okay, I want to be trained as a snake handler because then I can start earning money. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. that's not the case. Most of the time we do that completely free of charge. And there's a simple reason for that. A lot of the people that call us have no money to spend. I have been in, you know, if I go to the Kanyugasama area, mm -hmm. people have a lot of money. P uh, Kabulonga, people have money. I live in Roma, Kalundu, people there have money to spend. So mm -hmm. they can pay something. But I also go to sometimes compounds where people really don't have the money. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's either I go in there and remove the snake for free, or they kill it, or they try to kill it and get bitten in the process. Now, the la latter two we always try to avoid. So we don't charge money, but if people want to give us a contribution towards fuel, then it's always highly appreciated because we first of all have to go to where the snake is, catch the snake, put it in a container, but then we have to drive out of town to release it somewhere safe away from people because we want that snake no longer to be a problem for people, but also we want that snake to be safe from people. Okay. So we have another one from, yes. this one is coming from uh, Mwemba, oh, Emmanuel Jerry. And he says, does it happen that sometimes some of the snake catchers fail to catch a snake and abort the mission? 
<laughs> yes, um, not because we can't handle the snake, mm -hmm. because we have some very experienced snake handlers who can always be a backup or who can uh, help out. And sometimes we've had that, for example, somebody newly trained had to remove a python, but somebody more experienced came along to help. And we do that a lot, to help each other. Mm -hmm. You're really a network. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes we get called, we have a very big snake in the yard, we have seen it, it's right there. By the time we get there, and sometimes that's quite quick, and sometimes it takes a bit of time to, to travel to the location, it turns out the snake has moved, we haven't been informed, and the snake has hidden somewhere in a termite mount or has gone into very thick bushes. Now, it's impossible to find a snake back. You can have a very big snake hiding in a very small space. Okay. Um, and sometimes they just disappear in a little crack or in a hole in the ground. Now, then we can wait for days and days and days at end for the snake to come out, but that's simply not feasible. So okay. sometimes we have to give up because we simply can't find the snake back. Okay, so let's check on our Facebook page. We have so many messages coming through. This one is coming from Holly Golding. I have seen so many, I have, he says, I have seen many snakes being killed by girls. Uh, okay, Holly, <laughs> not sh I don't know about that, but I won't argue. <laughs> okay, those are brave girls. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so this one is coming from us. Well, as Holly is actually one of our snake removers as well. She's responsible for the area around Cabulonga. Oh, thank and you for watching, she's Holly. She's a lady, and uh, yeah, we're really happy that we also have women. We also have Zambians, and people think, oh no, this is a white person's hobby. It's not. We have a lot of Zambians as well. Okay. Our full board, apart from one member, our full board at his, is all Zambians. Uh, and we have a lot of Zambian snake removers registered with us as well. Okay, so we have another one. This one is coming from Asim Asimbuyu Ad Adeigo Mangala, mm -hmm. and he says, well explained, Marcel. Well yes. explained. Thank you, Asim. <laughs> Asim is one of my board members. Okay, I <laughs> hope I pronounced his name well. <laughs> okay. She's also a snake remover, and she's a Zambian, and she's a woman, and she's uh, living in Chisamba. She's doing a great job there. Okay, this one is coming from Terry Cholwe, and he says, I'm following. Okay, thank you for following. Okay, we have more questions from text messages. And this one is coming from Paul Mufuzi. What are the benefits of keeping snakes? Uh, I, think, I think you did explain, but just well, in case they've just joined us. It, it depends on what you mean with keeping snakes. Mm -hmm. With keeping snakes alive, that is basically I they think control that's the what pests they mean. for us. Yes, yes. and, and they're for, they are a very important uh, part of our ecosystem in Zambia. I mean, I, I've talked about the rats and the mice, but there are mm -hmm. snakes that specifically target eat, target eat only uh, ants and termites, which can cause damage to your construction and so on. Mm -hmm. And rats and mice also can transfer the diseases on humans, and they also de destroy our property. So it's very good to have snakes around because they make sure that the damage is limited. Also, um, mice and rats can transfer diseases, snakes can't, they mm -hmm. to humans. Okay, so we have a, an interesting question from Norman. That's from our Facebook page. Norman Barrett, mm -hmm. what plant can I use to chase poisonous? What plant can I, obviously, like what plant can I plant to use to chase poisonous snakes? Okay, first of all, when we, t we, we talk about snakes, we don't talk about poisonous, but venomous. That's very important, that distinction. Poisonous is something that you swallow or eat and swallow, which is bad for you. Eh? Like, uh, for example, bad food, which, which has gone bad. And there's some uh, poisonous frogs in the Amazon, which if mm -hmm. you eat that, you will be in serious trouble. Mm -hmm. We talk about venomous. Venomous is an animal that injects venom into you with fangs or a stinger. And then, I already said, there's no such thing as a snake repelling plant. There are several plants which people believe that can repel snakes, mm -hmm. but none of them work. There's a very simple reason for that. If a snake wants to get to a place, they will get to a place. If we want to get past something that smells bad, for example, roadkill, we just basically pinch our nose and we walk past it, and then afterward we open our, our nose and oh, we can breathe again, we are past the nasty smell. Snakes mm -hmm. can simply do that. Mostly they smell so very sensitively through their tongue. They, the tongue comes out, flickers, mm -hmm. taste, taste the air, comes in, process the what it has tasted, and it, it, that's how it smells, and then continues. The moment it smells something bad with the tongue and it still wants to pass it, it simply re retracts the tongue, closes the mouth, like we pinch your nose, slips mm -hmm. past or even through it, and then opens the mouth again. Okay. So, so we no plants, please. 
plant the plants because you want to eat the produce <laughs> or because you love the you pretty like flowers. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's a great reason to buy and plant plants. Don't buy them to repel snakes because for that you're basically wasting your money. Okay, so we have a question. This one is from our WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. uh, this is from Terry Cholwe and he's asking, do we have snake sanctuaries in Zambia? Um, well, every national park, game management area, any protected area in Zambia, and there are many, is basically also a snake sanctuary. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you want to find out where you would be able to see snakes, uh, living snakes, then the best way to go is, if you're in Livingston, you go to the, 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 to the reptile and crocodile farm there. If you're in, able to come to Lusaka, or if you live in Lusaka, mm -hmm. go to Kalimba Reptile Farms. They have a lot of the dangerous snakes uh, on display there. All, all the, the common dangerous snakes are, are, you can see there. They also have some of the harmless snakes which are common, and they want to expand. So a visit to Kalimba would be very educative. Plus the people who are working there and uh, work with the snakes, they're very knowledgeable. They're all Zambians, which also helps to, con con uh, to convince Zambians about uh, snakes and, and transfer knowledge. And they can explain everything about snakes as well. Okay, so we have another interesting question. This one is coming from Emmanuel Jerry. Mm -hmm. When is killing a snake justified? When is killing a snake justified? Okay, so mm -hmm. I am supposed to say you should never kill a snake. First of all, because snakes are protected by law. In the Wildlife Act of 2015, all snakes are protected by law. So basically, in theory, if you kill a snake, you, you commit a crime. And the Department of National Parks and Wildlife could persecute. Now, they don't do that because in often case people feel the need to defend themselves. Now, if mm -hmm. you are in a remote area, there's no snake remover available and you get surprised by a snake in your house and you want to protect your family, mm -hmm. I'm not going to be judging you if you kill that snake because you, your family comes first. Obviously. It's not always advisable because that encounter can end badly and you could get killed yourself or mm -hmm. get maimed for life or you get, get lasting uh, health problems. But sometimes people simply have no alternative but to kill the snake. In order so to protect the family. Y yes, so we need to be sensitive about that. Okay, so we have another question. This one is coming from Messi Mlinga. Mm -hmm. And she says, Marcel, why snakes? Where, like, why do you like snakes? Why? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I've had those questions. Why not? I'm, I've always been frogs very. Frogs uh, or butterflies. I, I like frogs too. Butterflies <laughs> are pretty, but they're also a bit. But they just flutter around. They don't do much interesting stuff. No. Um, what I like a lot about snakes is, mm -hmm. and I've liked snakes since I was a little boy. But I lived in the Netherlands, which is snake-wise a very boring country. You have three types of snakes. None of them can deliver a very problematic bite. And I always saw these fantastic. Uh, wildlife movies on TV about Africa, and I've always wanted to go to Africa, so I'm very happy to be privileged to be living in a you country like Zambia. You love it here? Oh, absolutely. It's beautiful, right? It is, yes. <laughs> we, are, we are now digressing. <laughs> no. um, but, okay, there are a lot of things to like about snakes. Mm -hmm. They evolved as an, as, an, an, as an animal species without legs, yet they're so graceful and so e e easy to move, uh, e easily moving around through any kind of habitat. You can find snakes almost everywhere in the world except for you know the, 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 the deep freeze areas you won't find them in the arctic and the antarctic and extreme north and south because it's simply too cold other than that you can find them anywhere in the world they are very successful hunters they are very very good at what they do and mm -hmm. they're very simple and basic and I if you look at some of the photos which we have on the website and if you really google for certain snake types some have amazingly beautiful patterns beautiful colors Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, we're, we are winding up now. We'll read just one more, just yeah. one more question. Yes, please. Okay, so this one is coming from Delia, and she says, "What is the lifespan of a snake if it is not killed?" Okay, so that's a very difficult question to answer. To, to, be, on to be honest, I don't know how long snakes can live, but. Uh, generally speaking, a snake lives long if they have access to a good hiding place eh, because they need to protect their body. Their body is, is basically a long, very vulnerable tube with weapons on one side. So they are very vulnerable for attacks by all kinds of animals that want to prey on them, including humans who want to kill them for just killing them. Mm -hmm. um, and basically a snake does not stop growing until it dies of old age. Old age, okay. Yes. So it's not, it's so like us, after puberty we have grown, that's how long we're going to get and at some point we're only going to shrink when we get really old. With snakes, that is not the case. That said, it depends on how much food is available and 
how well the snake can survive. And that, that food especially is very important. If you have a black mamba in an area where there's not so much food, the black mamba won't grow as much. But if there's a lot of food available, the black mamba from being born as a small snake can reach two meters in a year's time. Now, that doesn't say anything about the age. I'm really deliberately going around <laughs> that I because I that. don't <laughs> know. I don't okay. even think that data available about how old snakes can be. The snake in captivity usually gets older than the snake in the wild, for example. They already, you, you have to uh, uh, establish the distinction. So it's very difficult to answer that question. Okay, so we're closing now. Okay. What's the one thing that people should take from this workshop? What you should take from this, and I'm going to really again point it. First of all, if you want to learn more about snakes, please join the Facebook page Zambian Snakes and Other Crawlies. Uh, if you do in the search bar, you, do, you put Zam Snakes, you find the group. Then you need to answer a couple of questions that you will comply with the rules and what what. Then the admins will let you in, and there's a wealth of information. There's more than 15,000 people, all the snake experts in, in Africa or in Anglophone Africa are members of the group. We even have experts from all over the world on that group advising people about snakes and snake bites. There's a lot of information to be found there. Then on top of that, please also regularly visit the website www.his.com and his is spelled H-H-I-S-S -S. it's our website there you can find a full list of all the snake, snake removers per region in Zambia which is very important you also have a tab called the, the, um, the information station and there you can find all kind of helpful posters which you can download for free they're PDFs, you can download them if you want you can print them on big or small format and then you have information about snakes, or how to recognize snakes, uh, what to do in case of a snake bite. All that kind of information is available for you there and it's free of charge. So, Zambian Snakes and other, uh, and other Crawlies on Facebook and helping uh, www.his.com. Oh, Marcel, thank you so much for coming to the program. My pleasure. Very educative, informative. Uh, I'm trying to rate the scale now of my phobia for snakes. Um, <laughs> from 10? Mm, okay, we are, we are at 6. <laughs> We're not there. Well, at, at, least now, at, at least now you know that not all snakes are dangerous. Yes. And that the vast majority actually is not dangerous to humans at all. Mm -hmm. Which is a good thing to know. Yes. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us on today's workshop. Till next week, Wednesday. My name is Mtinta Monga Mwemba. Keep watching Millennium TV.